you. Look at your eyes. Look at them. Speckled. Colorful. Each one unique. And I created every one of them. I created everything. The universe. And you. I gave you your personality. I made you pure. Complex. And every day, I give you life. I love you. But something happened. You cheated on me. You didn't trust me. You sinned. You cut yourself off from me. And although you're still alive, you were slowly dying. So you looked for other things. first time with uh, one of these, so bear with me. Um, my name is Jay Spurlock. Some of you know me, uh, some of you don't. And uh, we're going to first start off with, I want to thank a few people uh, for allowing me this opportunity to be here. I know on this big stage, I'm scared to death. <laughs> this might be the most like transparent uh, person you've ever met. Um, I'm going to tell you some stories, but um, I'd like to thank, first, God for giving me this story that uh, I'm about to tell you that took everything away from me as I knew it, and at that time, I was, I was lost, and he, as he does everything, he turned it into good. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute. 
but I'd also like to thank uh, my family and friends. Um, some of you are here tonight, and I would not be here without you. And um, thank you for, you know, God, people cannot fix people, but I believe God uses people to help heal people. And uh, I have some people in this room that mean a whole lot to me. Uh, I'd like to thank New Vision, this church, uh, been here a while, in and out, and Pastor Brady, a good friend of mine, I don't know if he'll claim me after this, um, I hope he still does, um, but uh, I, I saw him the other day, and he said he might come in, I said, you just better not fall asleep, because I'm calling you out, um, and Pastor Todd and Danny, for your support and friendship, um, I've only known them a few few months, and um, since day one, you know, they welcomed me here in this ministry. I might have been that guy in the back that no one knew, which is fine, um, but I'm that guy with a story, and, and I believe God put me here for a reason, and uh, it is to give hope to others. Um, this is my happy place um, around young people that are that are um, searching for a relationship with God in a broken world that is that is surrounded with darkness. And then last but not least, I'd like to thank all of my former students. If you didn't know I used to be a coach and a teacher. And um, uh, my students don't know how much they mean to me and my players. When I was going through what I'm about to tell you in a minute, they don't know how much they meant to me and how they helped me. You don't know what struggle someone is fighting. You never know. And they pulled me through this, and they didn't even know what was going on. And, and they are a main reason I'm right here. Because a lot of times... Uh, Satan feeds lies and says, you know, no one cares about your story. People get their heart broke all the time. It don't matter. It's just another story. But it does. It does matter. And people reminded me that every day. Okay. So thank yous. Now for the real part. It is real. I promise you I'm shaking to death. <laughs> Christian, wherever you are, he, he, can, he was a witness to that. He shook my hand before. Uh, disclaimers and moments of truth. I am, as I've said before, scared to death. I am... Uh, last... So Monday night, uh, you know, as a coach and a teacher, I was preparing. And my grand auditorium of my kitchen. And I had a great audience. And uh, they, <laughs> they fell asleep within five minutes. So hopefully I can keep you up <laughs> longer than that. Uh, but they are four-legged, and um, I'm only going to mention them once, I promise. But uh, my dogs mean a lot to me, <laughs> the Golden Sparlocks, and they have more followers than me, so I'm humbled. But anyways, Monday night... I started um, going through my story, and about five minutes in, three takes later, I said, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. I froze. I'm like, you are, you're going to fail, and you're going to be up there on that stage, and everybody's going to see you fail, and I'm like, okay, game plan. Uh, Tide. I see Tide. Hey, Tide, uh, you know, flu, man, like, it's flu season. I'm really <laughs> sick. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not playing about this. I was considering every exit plan possible. You know, I was all excited about sharing my, my story, and then fear came. 
It was full on. But see, unlike previous times, I had a guy that was bigger than that fear. But I still went to bed that night like, mm, yeah, I'm not, this is not going to happen. I cannot do this. So, how God works. <laughs> you know, sometimes he sends a sign, sometimes he don't. And, you know, I was just getting up Tuesday morning, I still was fighting that. You're not going to tell this story. You know, you need to get out of this. This is going to be bad. It's going to look bad. You're going to look bad. You're going to look like an idiot. And uh, so I'm walking to my truck to go to work. And I finally cleaned some stuff out of my truck for some whatever reason. And as I'm coming back to my truck, this is laying right there. Now, if you don't know... <coughs> They're going to put a picture up there. But anyways, the, you've probably seen these before. You know, uh, verses that Brady said, you need these to survive. And, you know, I put them on my backpack when we were traveling. And it's supposed to, this is week nine. <laughs> I never got to week two. Uh, week nine, yeah. But it was a great idea and everything. And I honestly, this is my work truck. I do not know to this day how that got in my truck. But anyways, as I'm cleaning out that stuff and I'm coming back to go to work, there it is. And it says, Joshua 1, 9, <laughs> Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Yes. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Okay. <laughs> For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wow. I was like, can I unsee this real quick? That is just another thing in my story that just God amazed me. And he says, not so quick. You know, being a coach and stuff, I'd have been like, you know, ten, being Mises is what I call it when I try to be my own Jesus. Hey, you know, Jay, I saw you last night. Yeah, after those like five outtakes and freezing, you know, um, I think I think it's best that you probably sit this one out. You know, um, that ain't what he said, because he said. This is what he whispered to me. Because we had this conversation on the way to work. And he said, <laughs> uh, don't forget who you belong to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't want to tell my story. Hold up. See, I, I said, who do you belong to? I belong to you. So therefore what? It's your story. And I'm going to be right there with you. Okay. So here we are. Um, so before Jesus, let's, let's get to that. We're, you're going to do your own testimony later. Um, but let me tell you about my life before. I really, I mean, at the age of 16, I got baptized. Um, and I did it for the wrong reason. And it's not anybody's fault but myself. But, you know, I was at a small church, and every time they would do that invitation, and it's like, <clears throat> well, today would be a good day probably for you. Go on up there, bud. You know? So I did. And that day I'll never forget, not for what I did and how what that represented, but the baptism was broke. So I had to go. We, we got in the car and went down the road, waited for the church to get out, and then I was baptized. But my life from there, it wasn't, it was like, it was like, oh, finally I can go and not be stressed out. Any of y'all ever been like that? You know, being pushed into things that you don't want to do. 
So, you know, describing my life, I'd say it was basic, to use your terminology. Go to church on Sundays, you know, say the right things, get good grades, stay out of trouble, play sports. But it was, something was wrong. I was scared. And I didn't know what it meant to have faith. My faith was in myself and my achievements and my goals. Any of y'all there can relate? Don't raise your hand. It's okay. All right. So, my parents got divorced when I was in middle school. And it started this thing of I really was very shaken by it. And I just kind of took this motto of I'm going to, I can take care of myself. You know, I grew up real quick. And divorce is common these days, unfortunately. But I did tell you this. When I went through college and I eventually got married, I said, (laughs) I can tell you one thing that's not going to happen again to me. That D word's not coming back. Divorce. I know how that feels. I know how that hurts. It's packing bags everywhere you go. There's two Christmases. There's two Thanksgivings. Some of you can relate with me on that. So, I will say my true relationship with Jesus began in June of 2015. Um go out to visit family in Hawaii, land of paradise, see my sister out there and her two kids and my brother-in-law that I've known since I was about 11. We're really close. He was like my only brother. We spent some time going to Pearl Harbor, beautiful place, historic. I'm a history teacher, by the way. I've been in, to the World Trade Centers. I've been to Pearl Harbor now, like the disaster zones. But, but it's something about the world shifted at those places. And it's just, you just get chills. But anyways, Hawaii was great. And then when I came home, let's just say I was betrayed by two people I care about a lot. And being a fixer, I've always been able to fix stuff. That's why I love coaching and teaching. Can't shoot basketball? I'll help you with that. You know, you can't figure out uh, some kind of, not math, my mom's a math teacher. Uh, History, any kind of history question, I'll at least try or tell you to Google it if if I can't help you. But I wanted to fix it. And I was fighting for my marriage for about a a month. And sometimes you can't fix things. It's out of your hands. And as bad as you want it not to happen, it's going to happen. And uh, the world as I knew it forever changed that day and so did a lot of people I cared about I'm not going to go into detail it's not about those people and I, you know I, I can say this now I don't know about two years ago but I still love them just in a different way now because they're no different than me and you I'm a sinner saved by God grace God so it's not that but it hurt, and it still hurts. It hurt people I love, too. So, um, one of my favorite songs, you know, I feel like I read this book, uh, it's called Sandcastle Kings, and uh, it really got me onto this thing about the beach, sandcastles. I'm scared to death of the beach, by the way. 
So this really relates. When I go, I play on the beach. Uh, I don't like going anywhere. I can't see my feet. And I have some family here, and they know I can't swim either. So anyways, so it's, it's by uh, Casting Crowns, and it says, What if I gave everything? So why am I still standing here? Why am I still holding back from you? You've given me a faith that can move a mountain, but I'm still playing in the sand. Building little kingdoms that will never stand. I hear you call me out in the deeper waters, but I just want to settle on the shallow end. You can build that kingdom back. You can build a big, huge wall. But when God wants to do something, he's going to do it. And he did. He came in, you know, and, and a lot of people get angry when they're hurt. And a lot of times the first person they want to blame is God. And I was angry a little bit. Why me? <laughs> Everything is going so great. You know, go to church on Sundays, read a few Bible verses. But that day that I found out my marriage was over, it was just me. And that Bible that I had to dust off. And a kitchen floor and tears rolling down my face. Grown men do cry. When they have nothing else left to hold on to. So, that's when I found Jesus. For real. Not some Jesus up here, you know... This is when I started having a conversation like, you are the only thing I have left. What are you trying to teach me? I'm supposed to be good. Like, you know, three years into marriage, you're supposed to be thinking about kids, my dogs, I got my house, I'm teaching, coaching, life is great. But I didn't know Jesus. And if that didn't happen, I probably would still be just kind of, you know, Jesus would be over here and I'll be here. And it radically changed my life. So, I don't know if they had that graphic, but I made this nice little graphic, but it's a, yeah, yeah all right. So there is my St. Castle before June of 2015. And there it is. When life happens, you know what's about to happen, right? Yeah. It's not pretty. Picture's worth a thousand words. So, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit. I'm going to move this on, but, you know, when you, the, something about water and I can't swim scares me to death. But something I ever read, you know, it says, you're, you know, speaking of God, you're the constant in a sea of change. You know, you throw an anchor out, and that anchor is no good unless it is caught onto something. And some of us, it's our friends, a car, job. Accomplishments, scholarships, boyfriend, girlfriend, dogs. <laughs> and that thing just keeps moving. And the only thing that you can really find hope in that it sticks is God. So, you know, I don't know where you are in life, but I know this. We live in a fallen world. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. Maybe I'm a little better of a sinner, I guess, but, I don't, you know, 
Everybody judges everybody else. Well, I'm not as bad as that person over there. And see, when you start doing that and you compare, you're setting your standard on another human and not God. That's what I discovered because I love comparing. Oh, yeah, wait till you hear my story. You know, everybody's story is worse than everybody else's. But God gave you your story, and he did it for a reason. And this thing right here, I think that's the right side of you. <laughs> Not science teacher. But if you can fill your heart, because there were some times, I'm going to be honest with you, that I was dark and alone and didn't have anything else to grab onto. And man, that is not a good place to be. <laughs> and he's like, not so fast, dude. You're mine. Like, no, 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 no. But I just want to lay here and like, I'm going to use this to bring me glory. Yes. Thank you. Such a great story. But, and now I went and traded it for nothing. Because it has radically changed my life and transformed me. All right. So, how my life is now, and I want to, I'm going to finish up here. I love I'm trying to keep on time. I'm always looking for this. <laughs> Here's my watch. I always do that. <laughs> you have to be there. Um, what is your life now like with Jesus? There should be a change. But I'll tell you this. My life is... Um, not easy. I always thought it is. It's not rainbows and what? What do they call it? Lollipops, whatever else you want to call it. I don't know. I just made something up. I still, every day, wake up and have to decide. And that, here's these little wristbands. And by the way, you might you get one tonight. I'll explain those in a minute. But this word means a lot to me, surrender. And I have to decide if I'm going to live for myself or if I'm going to live for God. I'm going to live for little G's, you know, whatever that little God is that's battling for your heart. Or am I going to surrender and trust that he's going to carry me through? But it's not easy. So I don't want you to know that. I want you to, uh, life is a struggle. And, and you know, that gives me faith and hope that there's a better world than this one. So when you're down and out, a couple of scriptures here. Oh, one last thing I want to talk about too. <laughs> Therapy. When I was uh, going through this, like I was hurt and I was trying to numb the pain. And I was reaching for anything I could possibly. And someone was like, you need to get therapy. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't want to talk to nobody. <laughs> I'm a dude, man. I need that. And then when I started going home and, like, I wanted to numb the pain and, like, any way I could, that's not what I wanted. And I knew I was in trouble. So I called and this lady has forever changed my life. I'm in two years into therapy now. So I just want you to know, you know, I'm not saying she changes things, but she helped me. I, God uses people. Your coach, your teacher, your, your neighbor, your buddy, your small group friends, whoever you meet at Unite this weekend. They struggle too. 
And the only way is as long as you keep that inside, it's going to stay there. But if you write or talk it out or, or get it out some way, then you can, you've got to be empty to be filled. Okay? I think that's my cue of I better hurry up. So, um, I'll leave you with this. There's a couple quotes. Ty, you can come on out, man. But uh, uh, one of my favorite authors, Jamie George, in one of his books, he reminds us that God is repeatedly tuning our lives. I can't play a guitar. I bought one. <laughs> I was going to be like the next, I don't know, whoever, Jason Aldean, whatever. Uh, sell myself short a little bit. I'm a guitar hero, like pro. But every day he is tuning me. My desires have changed. And when you do, you're going to scare yourself. I'm like, why well, do I want to listen to Christian music? I'm that guy now. And that's my only place to go. And it's like, turn it up. So don't be afraid. When you take that step and you start living for God, your desires are going to change. And you're going to fight it. But embrace it. No, that's where life is. And final. Uh, this is one of the best quotes I've, I've read in a long time. Let your light shine so brightly that others can see their way out of the dark. So, you know, you never know what people are battling. But keep that in mind. That you might be that only light that they have at that moment. Who's this Jesus guy you talk about all the time? Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you how he changed my life. Because, you know, we can quote scripture all day and stuff. But I want, I want to hear that story of how he changed your life and transformed you. All right. Fantastic job, Jay. Could you put that quote back up there for me? Give it up for Jay. Yeah. He shared this quote with me on Monday at Zaxby's over by Blackman, and it says, let your light shine so brightly that others can see their way out of the dark. And I was like, dang, doesn't that just explain how we're supposed to live as Christians? And here's one of the things Jay does. He likes to constantly remind himself of what he's supposed to do as a Christian, constantly have encouragement. And he has some wristbands that he doesn't just buy. He designs and he makes. And a lot of them say, let your light shine. Or this one says, shine through the darkness. And it's actually glow in the dark, which that's pretty sweet. And so here's what we want to do today. And why I asked Jay to come and share was because I think he has a powerful story. But you don't have to be a pastor to share your story. You don't have to be someone who gets on stage regularly to share your story. You just have to be someone who has given their life to Jesus. And he's changed their life. And so I got two things for you tonight to help you let your light shine. Number one is if you see up front, at the end tonight, we have buckets. And in the buckets... Jay was kind enough to bring some different bracelets. There's a few different ones to choose from, but when we sing this last song, you have the opportunity to come up and grab a bracelet. I got one on and just use it as a reminder to let your light shine. But probably the best way to let your light shine is a testimony. When you go on Amazon, what do you check? You check the reviews. And when you see those good, positive reviews, you want to buy that product. That's what a testimony is. You telling people how awesome Jesus is and that he changed your life. And so when you grab that bracelet, you'll see a little card like this. And it's just a little worksheet that will help you share your story. Three questions. Your life before you started a relationship with Jesus, how you started a relationship with Jesus, and what your life is like now. So here's what I want to do. I want to pray for us. Pray for Jay. Pray for you. Because I know there's people that you're going to share your story with. 
And it might just inspire them to give their life to Jesus. Because you're going to let your light shine in the dark. And some people are going to see the way out. And the way is Jesus. Let's pray. And when I say amen, we stand up and worship. And you guys come. And don't just grab a bracelet. Grab this worksheet too. Because I guarantee there's people that are hurting that need to see your light. And you need to share your story. Let's pray. God, I thank you for Jay. I thank you for why Jay can come and speak today. He can come and speak today because you've changed his life. Because he knows you. I pray for every student here. I know many in here know you and have that relationship with you. And I pray they wouldn't hold that inside. 